So this is um, a little video about two guys. Um, one I'm writing of at the minute. Um, the well-known Mickey Duff uh, and a guy called John Spencer who I was uh, quite close to probably for about the last eight years of his life. We had lots of chats on boxing. Um, and in the 70s and the 80s, he was, a, he was a huge name in the promotional kind of boxing world, along with Mickey Duff. John was um, behind fighters such as Glenn McCrory, um, the Feeney brothers from Hartlepool, uh, Dave Garside, um, Neil Malpass, many, many fighters. Um, and I'm going to be dedicating the Mickey Duff book to John's memory. Um, and so, obviously, being a promoter uh, in, the, in that kind of era, if you like, he was going to come across Mickey Duff, um, who was probably in my opinion, the most well-respected and most feared manager uh, stroke promoter there was. Uh, he gave that kind of iconic quote, didn't he? If you want loyalty, to buy a dog. You know, he would often tell people, never fall in love with a fighter. Yeah, Duff was detached from his emotions and um, he, was a, he was a shark in business and um, very rarely you ever got the better of him. But John Spencer did a couple of times, one being, um, I think Duff took him to court. You know, obviously, you know, John being Northern, I mean, John had the audacity to kind of even put shows on at the York Hall, Bethlehem Green, which was, of course, you know, it was back in that time, you know, nothing happened in British boxing without Mickey Duff, Mike Barrett, Jarvis Astaire and Terry Lawless known as the cartel happening. Um, so, yeah, you know, they were kind of get peeved off about it. Try to sue John. John come out on top. Um, but the video I want to talk about um, is a guy... Well, basically, there was there was a fight put on. Um, so this was at the, the Royal Albert Hall in 1981. So one of John's fighters was a guy called Dale Henderson Thane. Um, many people who've read my books will be familiar with that name. Um, because of Henderson Thorne's links to Lee Duffy. Um, they had a fight, probably about 87. A, 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 lot, a lengthy fight. Um, Dale was a, a very good middleweight boxer. But, of course, you know, no match for the Duff. Um, big, young, six foot four heavyweight. Um, probably in his prime, then, you know, 22, 23 or whatever when he was. And um, so anyway... Dale, Dale Henderson Thorne was 2-0 in 1981. And uh, he was offered a fight with this massive punching guy from Bristol called Nick Wilshire. Um, Wilshire was a devastating puncher. Anything he, he broke. Um, I'm just trying to think. Not not off the top of my head. I don't think there was... You probably better check it on BoxRec. But there wasn't many people that went the distance of Nick Wilshire. Um, so Mickey Duff offered um, John Spenceley the fight for his lad, Dale Anderson Thorne. And um, it was last minute, you know, so it was back in 81 for probably an eight rounder you were probably looking at. Uh, 500 quid was, was fantastic money, you know, for a, for a, a show of, um, for that level, if you like. But John... Spensley, you know, he um he was an old sh he was an old fox, and he knew basically that if people are ringing up asking for opponents within t twenty four hours or the last twenty four hours before the show, he he knew he could have charged what he wanted, um so he basically said to Duff, look, we'll take the fight, but instead of the five hundred quid plus expenses, I want two and a half grand, <laughs> and um you know M Mickey Duff. He was like Samity Sam, cartoon character who jumped up and down, bawling and swearing, and he kind of, you know, effing and bland, and, and basically Duff knew, you know, this guy was the perfect weight, perfect, I think Wilshire was 3-0 and all by then, um, Dale Anderson Thorne was 2-0, and all, um, but he didn't stand any chance of winning him. You know, this, this fight was basically, you're going to lose, um, but it's quite a lot of money, do you know what I mean? So good on you. Um, the fight, in actual fact, ended out with um, Wilshire 
ironing out uh, Lens and Thurn in about two rounds, as expected. But it was massive money. It was good money. Even the 500 quid would have been good money. So um, for, for a fight, which was um, the last 24 hours, John told him two and a half grand and... Um, and Duff couldn't get over it, but he had to pay it anyway. When John Spency rang him um, two weeks later, Mickey's wife, Mary, answered the phone and was like, John, I don't know what you've done to Mickey, but all, I spoke, all he spoke about for two weeks is about how you've had him over. You know, that was that was Duff. Um, I think he said something to John along the lines of, you know, if someone ever shafts you, I hope you're thinking of me. You know, not many people got the better of Mickey Duff in a business deal, and, that, and John Spency did. And... Um, and yeah, John, very, very sadly missed. And um, it's quite ironic, really, how I'm going to be writing a book on Duff. And um, they were all promotional sparring partners and they knew each other very well. And I will be dedicating the little big man, Mickey Duff, to uh, John Spenceley's memory.